Follow me here. Generation X raised millennials. Millennials are raising Generation Alpha. And from each generation to the next, sure, parenting styles are bound to change. In fact, a new report by Lurie Children's Hospital found nearly nine out of 10 millennials say their parenting style is different than from how they were raised. For example, 98% of millennial parents talk about mental health with their kids, which they say wasn't the case with their own parents. And 77% feel they are more present with their kids than maybe their parents were. We've pulled in our personal parenting expert to get her take on these numbers and these attitudes. Studio 5 contributor Heather Johnson will share why millennials are doing it differently and what they are doing right. Great to see you, sister. Mm -hmm. I think it's great to celebrate the differences because a lot of times we roll our eyes and kind of give them a one-two. Right. We do. It's yeah. true. And there are, there's a lot of differences. We can kind of look at why first. And it's important to remember that we tend to respond as a new generation based on what the generation before us did. It's the swing. It is. It is that swing. And so as there was a lot of authoritative parenting, then there was a lot of curiosity in parenting. We've now got millennials who are looking at it as a result of that and changing some things up because of what they've seen before them. We also know that millennials have access unlike any other generation has ever had That's access. That's true. They have access to resources and opportunities and information that generations before them have been unable to tap into. Which, that's an interesting point that gets into some interpersonal relationship dynamics, I would think, because they're not asking for help. They're not needing mm -hmm. help, right? Right. New parent right. To, mm -hmm. to mom or new parent to old parent. To grandma, right. Like right. we used to, and that would change that bond. Mm -hmm. It does. It changes that bond. They do have this feeling that they can go find the information because it exists. Yeah, they Google it. So they go find it and right. they get it. And so it means that they don't have to rely on the generations in the past mm -hmm. as much as, I mean... I can remember sitting down and my mom always like giving me that rundown or if there was a problem calling her I never thought to get on the internet to answer sure. a question sure millennials do that's their first go-to is let's get on the internet and let's figure it out and with that swing like this is what how I was raised and here's how I'm going to improve it does that mean every third generation we're getting it right and we're landing in the middle is that how that works every third generation we're going to get it just you got spot it. on you right? got it just spot on we've asked you to kind of formulate a list of mm -hmm. things millennials are doing well that I think as the supervising or supportive right next generation, older generation, we can shake our pom-poms yeah. out a little bit. You appreciate their communication. They are. They're much more communicative, especially with their children and with each other as spouses. Communication is a bigger deal. Other things that are a really big deal, they put a lot more emphasis on emotional intelligence. This is so good. Mm. It is so good that they're putting their energy there. These parents are much more flexible in their parenting style. So instead of being really rigid, which essentially we know kind of two generations before there was that authoritative, the controlling, the rigidity. Yeah. We're losing that. And so there's a lot of flexibility. Another thing I love that millennials are doing right is that they are all about fathers being involved. Mm -hmm. And so fathers are much more involved than they've been in the past. And this is very powerful. That's even one generation. I mean, you can speak to remote work opportunities. Yep. You can yep. speak to bosses and managers seeing the benefit of this mm -hmm. and supporting family life differently. But that has changed enormously in just one generational shift. It has in one generation. COVID helped with this. Sure. A lot of things have helped, but millennials have grabbed onto it. And to see that fathers want to be engaged and yeah. want to be involved. The other huge difference that we're seeing with millennials is they take a much more gentle approach to parenting. This doesn't mean they're permissive. It doesn't mean that they're excusing bad behavior. It does mean, though, that they want to create more teamwork with their kids. It's that they want to help guide them through decision-making instead of force them to make decisions. And this can be a knock point, I think. It could be. They take a mm -hmm. lot of flack for. Like, you're, like gentle, maybe another word would be soft. You're too soft. Right. Right. And we'll talk about in a minute the importance of not being too soft and not swinging too far. But it is important to recognize that gentle parenting is powerful. Mm. Being willing to slow down, to mm. manage your own emotions, to sit still. Really, we're talking about empathy and we're talking about understanding. Should it ever dismiss that there needs to be discipline? No. But they are more willing to sit still and manage their own emotions to then be able to connect with their kids. There's a gentleness to that that connects people. That's good. That's really good when it's done in healthy ways. I love that sentence. Gentle parenting is powerful. Mm -hmm. So what can we keep in mind, Heather, regardless of the generation that we're parenting in, that we're raising our kids or grandchildren in, there are a few things to take note of. You say take with you what matters. With us, right? Remember, every generation of parenting has good and bad. Sure. There are things we can find where it's been done well and where it hasn't been done that well, where research then the next generation shows us that wasn't a really great approach to take. So it's more important, instead of thinking I'm a millennial, this is how I need to do it, it's more important that we actually look at what we're doing and what our families need and ask what's good that I take with me, what's good that I leave behind, and take with us what matters. 
we can get really caught up in, well, I need to do it this way because I'm a millennial or I'm a Gen X. Or mm. I'm a, we want to step back and go, no, I want to take with me what is best for my family, what's best for our relationship with our kids. Yeah. That's what we want to take with us. That's what matters. And this is where I might get a finger point and be accused of, you know, the Pollyanna ways that I sometimes just truly embrace. But I think it's a beautiful thing when you can celebrate what mm -hmm. went well. I think it's so easy to point out what your parents did wrong. Mm -hmm. And I think, yes, mm -hmm. there's, there's, you know, some fairness in acknowledging that and improving upon that. But there's a lot of things that went right. Absolutely. And that helps motivate us, right, when we focus on those things. It also keeps our relationship strong. Yeah. We're actually going to benefit more from just seeing everything as neutral. Mm. Seeing everything that your parents did or the generations before you, look at it as purely neutral. Not right or wrong. Not right or wrong, just neutral. And then decide, of these things, all neutral, which do I want to put in my backpack and carry with me, and which would I rather leave behind? I like that. If we keep it neutral, it's really, it becomes a lot easier to keep those relationships strong. If we're only looking at the negative, it hurts our relationships. But we can look at it as neutral, grab the things we like, and by all means, yeah. they matter. Take Decide. them with you. Take them I, with you. I find, I've observed that you and I are talking more and more about pendulum swings, mm -hmm. which is an interesting point all in, all in of itself. But that, that speaks to this next idea that we want to avoid the extremes. We do. We want to avoid the extremes. Anytime we're finding ourselves at an extreme in anything, we've essentially gotten unhealthy. It's a really great way to remember and think about it. We function that way, right? We're really controlling as parents for a generation and then we become way too permissive and then way too controlling and then yeah. way too permissive. So we want to avoid those extremes. As parents, we want to be gentle, but we can't negate discipline. We want to raise children who are empathetic and also who are not pushovers. Mm -hmm. We want them to be inclusive, very inclusive. And we also need to teach them to stand up for core values. We want to teach them to be tender and also make sure they know how to be tough. That is not an extreme. That is finding the middle and yeah. letting that pendulum just hang out right right in the middle. And that and is possible. It is. It's it is possible. absolutely possible. And it's healthiest. Mm. Right? So we got to remember that. It's not just possible. It's actually what's most healthy. Yeah. This next truth is beautiful, and I think mothers need to remind themselves of this more than we do, but trust that you are right for your children. We are right. And why are we right? Because we are their moms. We are their grandmothers. We are their fathers and their grandparents. We are right because that's the position we hold. But for us to know what our kids need and build those relationships, we have to trust that. I have to trust that I have the capacity and the ability so that then I can look at my strengths and magnify them, and I can look at my weaknesses and strengthen them. But those things can't be seen until I trust that I'm the right one for them. Yeah. And so to take that step back, regardless of your generation, it doesn't matter how you were raised yeah. or what generation, millennial, gen, what that you're raising kids right. in. We want to make sure that we trust that we are right for our kids. Yes, yes. It is so powerful once we accept that. We're going to let our values rule, again, no matter what generation mm -hmm. we're parenting in. No in, matter. In the 30 quick seconds we have left together, tell me what it means to be healthy in parenting. For us to be the parents we want to be, it, again, regardless of the generation, we've got to be healthy ourselves. Yeah. We've got to take a step back and recognize that we've got to learn to manage those things, make sure our emotions are under control, understand our value system. When we are healthy, then we can implement any parenting practice we need to when we're healthy. But when we're not healthy, it is really hard to see, again, what parenting practice would be beneficial for our kids. And that's where those values matter more than anything. It doesn't matter how you were raised. It matters that we make our decisions in our homes based on a value system because they don't change. Yeah. It creates a foundation that is solid. Love it's it. solid. Love it, Heather. Such great foundational reminders. If you want to contact Heather for counseling, you can find her information on our website. Great job.